Dear friends, celebrating the third Sunday of Easter, we have a very interesting personality to dwell on. That is Peter. Peter was so vulnerable, weak, a fisherman. He denied Jesus three times. And now he has become a preacher. And he is very powerful. He is standing outside at the temple gate, a very important place where people meet one another, each other. And there he is preaching about Jesus Christ who is resurrected. Just imagine a fisherman becomes a preacher, he becomes a scribe, he becomes a teacher, and he is very bold. Now, what is the background? If you read five chapters of the Acts of the Apostles, you can just imagine how many times these disciples and apostles of Jesus were threatened by the chief priests and the elders, and some of them even intended to kill them. They were brought to the Senate. They were asked not to speak about Jesus Christ. And now, at one point, it was Peter and John very clearly saying to all these prominent figures of Jerusalem, we have to obey God. You are human beings. We cannot listen to you. We are here to obey God, and you cannot stop us. That was the power. That was the power of the resurrection. Now, that is why here in this first reading today, Peter brings out the entire history of salvation beginning from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the holy fathers of the Old Testament, and then he brings the name of Jesus. You handed the Holy One to be executed, to be killed. Even though Pilate wanted to release him, you wanted him to be killed. But the father of the Lord Jesus, his servant, Jesus Christ, his servant, that is the servant of God, he raised him on the third day. Now, Peter has a little confession to make about himself. Now, what does he say? Well, you have done all these things because of ignorance. Even the rulers have done it out of ignorance. I have done it out of ignorance. I have denied him three times. I had my own doubts. Now, why they doubted? Because in the gospel passage we find these disciples were, even though joyful when they saw Jesus, they were still disbelieving. Among them was Peter too. They were disbelieving even after Jesus' appearance once or twice. And now Peter is filled with that power. Peter, in spite of his own flaws and weaknesses, is giving a powerful witness to the resurrected Lord. Dear friends, what is resurrection in our life? How we can live the spirit of resurrection? Now, I consider the spirit of the resurrection is to bring us that joy. Now, when we live in this world, dear friends, it is normal that we all take care of ourselves. You know, we take good food, we take good exercise, we would like to look very handsome and beautiful, we would like to live a long life, we need to have a lot of wealth, we need to have name, fame, we would like to be known. All these things are good. But how long? I have never heard of a person who lived immortal here in this world. After 80 or 90, what? Your wealth does not help you. Your health is failing. You look sometimes maybe very old. I look old already. You know, you lose your hair, you have wrinkles, no matter how much of creams you apply and apply, go to the doctor to have a facelift and lip lifts or tooth lifting or teeth lifting or whatever. You know, it has its own time. It goes on fading and fading and fading. But then what is the resurrection, dear friends? That empowers us. We know that 
after that particular time, we are going to have another existence. And that should really encourage us. Now, what is this resurrection? It is not just having a self-satisfaction. I tell you something else to do today. You know, resurrection does not mean that I save myself, I believe in Jesus Christ, I am very happy, I pray to God, Lord, when I die, keep me on the right side of Our Lady. What about others? They don't like right side, or they don't like left side, or when I die, keep me very close to St. Joseph, or when I die, please keep me very close to St. Anthony. What about others? You know, that's a very egocentric way of praying. Resurrection is diffusing the joy, diffusing and bringing people together. Dear friends, when we are in our families, let us not poison the minds of our children, the young people, with all our past happenings. You know what has happened in the past? You know, my father ill-treated me, mother ill-treated me, you do not understand, I did not have opportunities, I did everything with my own hands, and now I am giving you opportunities and good life. Don't tell that. Let the joy of the resurrection bring that joy in your family. Spirit of forgiveness. That's what Pope Francis, who is St. Peter today for us, he is taking the place of St. Peter. Pope Francis is an encouraging guy. You know, he is a person who encourages people. Celebrate life, he says. Forgive abundantly. Have compassion. Really have that kind of mercy. Be generous. Embrace one another. Kiss one another. Bring people together. Enjoy life, he says. What is this enjoying life? Enjoying life in the name of the blessed Lord, resurrected Lord. Sometimes it is very, very uh, funny. You know, very often when I sit in the confessional, people come and confess their sins, you know, general confessions. The main, main sin is, Father, I did not come for Sunday Mass. You know, sometimes I have to ask a question, why you did not come for Sunday Mass? Father, I was very, very ill. So where it is written in the Bible or in the canon law or any constitution of the church that when you are ill, you have to come for Sunday Mass? It is not written anywhere. Someone will come and say, Father, I did not come for Sunday Mass. Why? You know, I was feeling very sick. And I say, you must be very old. Yes, Father, I'm 85 years old. 85 years old, you stay at home and pray. You don't need to come to the church for Sunday Mass and you consider that is a sin. That is not a sin at all. You know, we are so fixated about Sunday Mass. What is important, dear friend? We need to have the joy of the resurrection. When you are not able, don't come to the church. Celebrate at home. Diffuse that joy, forgive and love, be generous, give a smile, give an embrace, have nice food. That's why when Jesus was resurrected, what did he do? Appearing to his disciples, he asked, have you anything to eat? And I was surprised. Resurrected Lord asking for food to eat? That means in the heavens there must be some kind of menu. If resurrected Lord can eat, we also can eat. I was just imagining. You know, if that is true, Jesus asked for a broiled fish and he ate in their presence to cast their doubts away. We need to understand that through the resurrection of Christ, dear friends, all our sins are forgiven. Now look at the second reading. It's a powerful disciple of Jesus, apostle of Jesus Christ, John, he writes, he writes, I'm writing these things that you may not sin. And what are our sins? Sometimes we offend, sometimes we cheat, sometimes we pain others. I'm writing these, these things that you may not sin. But even if you sin, John knew that we are going to commit sins. You have an advocate in Jesus 
to defend yourself. What is this advocacy of Jesus? Now, how many have you? How many of you have lawyers? I have a lawyer. Can you put up your hands? How many of your lawyers, please? Yeah, many of you have lawyers. If you don't have a lawyer, it's bad for you, because if you do some monkey business, he is going to defend you. He is going to defend you, but you have to pay. But we have an advocate. We don't need to pay. Why he is advocating? Why he is the advocate? He will stand before the Father on the judgment day, and you will be brought. I will be brought, and Jesus will say to the Father, "Father, you know I too was in the flesh. You know it's so difficult. It is so hot down there. It is so uh, weird when we are hungry, when we are thirsty. We are filled with tensions and thoughts and things about the past and the future." father that guy has done something wrong maybe you know he did it so forgive him advocate that is what jesus is going to do for us jesus said to his disciples after showing his hands and feet and after eating that piece of broiled fish he told his disciples opening their minds to the scriptures you know scripture is such a important powerful living book to all of us therefore this is a recommendation to all of us dear friends it is the scripture don't please don't read the scripture just as you read a story book okay a father has said i need to read the scripture where is the scripture it must be filled with dust today i have to open the scripture father has asked open the scripture skip some pages ah i have read it okay this is a story of the prodigal son don't read that way you know scripture should not be read as you are reading a story book or a novel handle it with that real reverence open it say a prayer i am going to read the book of life jesus said from moses prophets and the psalms everything has been realized that the christ should suffer and on the third day must rise again that is the good news what is the good news dear friends for us our sins are forgiven as saint john says not only our sins the sins of the whole world so if we are hopeful in jesus we should rejoice that all our sins are wiped out whether you make your confession or not that is immaterial i have said several times that in the confessional you get the grace of god and the power of god the moment you repent that's why peter says repent and come back to god if we repent and coming back to god your sins are already forgiven i have said it last sunday i am repeating it again because i am not tired of repeating certain things that must enter in our hearts that be sure that god has already forgiven you and we need to do one more thing proclaim and spread the good news of jesus resurrection and that is the very essential thing in today's gospel passage as jesus is sending his disciples to proclaim in a loud way that's why peter was at the entrance of the the gate of the temple telling the people that jesus resurrected and we need to believe in him repent and come back to god dear friends as we are celebrating this third sunday of easter we must must keep in mind one important thing and i get an inspiration from reverend norman vincent peel have you heard about him you know some of his books are he is a very a great pastor he was a great pastor uh, he wrote a lot of books on positive thinking you know what does he say he gives us a six word principle for our life what does he say in order that miracles may happen in our lives we need to expect a miracle three words already 
make miracles happen. Expect a miracle, make miracles happen. The disciples were not expecting a miracle. That's why their minds were so dull. You know, sometimes we can enter into dullness. You know, we feel depressed. In the last few days, it was raining cats and dogs. And I was in this house alone, looking through the windows. It was looking so cloudy, raining. When it is going to be over? Then I always think about the resurrection. One day everything will be sunny. And today it is sunny. I was surprised. Dear friends, when we have the assurance of resurrection in our daily lives, we are empowered, we are encouraged. In all our situations, whether it is old age, poverty, weakness, sin, pain, defeat, difficulties, we need to have that spark of the resurrection in our lives and we will feel always elevated, encouraged, empowered and strengthened. Please rise with Professor of Faith.